My name is Niall Flores. I'm from the St. Louis area, particularly on the Metro East side. And uh, what I do is WordPress web design and development. I focus on designing websites that convert, which means that I build sites that make sure that you persuade your customers to buy that product, subscribe to your newsletter, comment on your site, share your articles. So that you get a return on investment, which is pretty much the name of the game of any website, what regardless if you are actually selling something that you, you or not selling something, technically your words, you are selling something. So you can find me at blondish.net and uh, don't that's a whole different long story why blondish.net instead of my name, but it's pretty fun, it fits me. And, you <laughs> and if you need to tweet me, BlondishNet on Twitter, if you follow me, tell me you're following me. I will follow you back and I'll say hi back to you. There's, I, there's so many people, I don't even know 90% of them. So 14 years of blogging. How many have you been blogging under a year? Wow, you veterans in here. Two to four years. Five to ten years, ten plus years. Ooh, yay! So some of you have like wonderful stories to share with me from back in the day. So most people, when they read my site, it's a lot of techie stuff, mostly social media blogging, WordPress, web design, you know, all the cool things that you want to learn today. So I wasn't always a tech blogger, but I wasn't a mommy blogger kind of one of those random bloggers out in space, you know. I did whatever. That's how the blogosphere was back then. I wasn't always a WordPress user. I've been in the WordPress community since it began. In fact, even before that, I used B2 Cafe Log. Before that, I actually manually blogged on GeoCities. <laughs> yeah, it got pretty ugly back then. And uh, before I blogged, you know, I wasn't always a mom. So my son's only 12 years old. That's a picture of him. So when I got into blogging, all I knew was I just wanted to write. I wanted to share my story. I was an English literature major. You wouldn't be able to tell that from my writing today because blogging is not like journalism in any, any bit. I'm not teaching anybody out of college. I probably could. I don't care for it. I just wanted to write. I love it. And uh, I wanted to share my story, my feelings and everything because it's the best way for me to share something about myself. So one of the biggest mistakes I had in the beginning, like I told you, I had a random site. I had no site focus. You don't even know what the heck I was, you know, what are you doing and everything. So even if you blog about random stuff around your personal li life, let people know who you are, what you're offering, and why you matter. People love to hear your story. If you cannot tell them anything about yourself on the front page of your site, whether you're a business, or you're having a personal site, or you're a magazine, people get confused and will bounce off your website. I think there's a statistic out there. I do not, I cannot remember. I heard it on a podcast that the bounce rate, meaning that somebody who visits your website and just visits the homepage and leaves, for the average blogger, that bounce rate is between 75% to 90%. After I changed my site focus and everything, I'm running about a 45% bounce rate. Choose a domain name. Some of you in the old days used to see your friends bounce around on do cutesy domain names. I was one of them. Blueberries.com and just stuff that had nothing to do with me. And as I kept going from domain to, to domain, I was carelessly losing traffic because I, I would redirect them and then let the domain expire and those people who maybe, you know, didn't go on the line so much, didn't know what, 
where I was. They'd have to search for me, and of course, Google, people didn't, weren't, weren't too much of a fan of Google way back then. So today, choose a domain carefully. Changing domains on a whim can hurt you. Yes, you can redirect these things. There's tools for that. That's great, but still, when you start getting a reputation with people, and they look for that place first, and, some, and a lot of us don't really think about redirecting right away. We're just so excited to get to that new place that we forget about where we were before. So if you're going to, for the first time, choose a domain, keep it as long as you can. Find a valid reason why you should, should change that domain. If it's a really professional brand name issue, like for example, people are getting confused on why you are choosing that name, that could be a valid reason, but just make sure, like, reach out to the people, poll them and everything. You know, do you connect with this domain name? If they don't, then maybe it's a time for a change, but make sure once you do, do the steps, proper steps, so you don't lose that traffic you already built on that old site. Well, blondes.net doesn't tell anybody what I do, but it kind of tells people that somebody blonde is running it, you know. <laughs> yeah, there are people who, yes, it's, 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 great, it's great to have your keyword and your domain, but it's not necessary if you are a specific brand that's already established and on your front page. You tell them the things I just told you in the previous slide about telling people who you are, what you're offering, and why you matter to them. I'm sorry? If you can, if, you know what, if you want to strut that, you know, it, you can do that. I mean, I've seen some weird ones in my day, and some of them, like, they, I'm like, okay, I guess it works for you. And some of them teach web design. They're like, okay, that's your web design company. Cool, all right. This is a big thing. But, um... One of the biggest things for years that I was missing was a newsletter. I did a uh, poll in work, uh, the 2014 WordCamp Orlando on how many people in the room uh, go to their inbox first, time, first thing in the day. 95% of that room rose their hand. It means their inbox is their home. So, you have a newsletter, you're actually welcoming it into your home. Uh, if they don't go to your website for the day, well, why don't you get a piece of your website into like your RSS feed, and there's an RSS to newsletter campaign option in most uh, places like MailChimp, Aweber, Constant Contact, and if, even in Infusionsoft, you know, almost all the places. That you can bring them back to your blog post. You can also utilize that to, most of them you can customize and you can actually put a tip for the week. That's what I do with mine. I have an RSS to newsletter letter campaign, but I put a tip every week before they get to see the new blog post that I did for the whole week. So that's, if, if you're not much into the marketing world, have a newsletter at least to bring them back to your blog. This is <laughs> never, this is not stressed enough. Uh, throughout the years, I, I've stopped crying when people do, when they lose something on their website and they go, I can't get it back. Backups are really important. You never know if you're going to get hacked or, or anything. Sometimes that backup might actually be your saving grace. And the issue is, aside from always having backups, don't wait for your web host to do it for you. 
Not all of them do it. Not all of them are obligated to do it. In fact, it's, uh, most of them in their terms of service say, we're not obligated to do backups for you. So you may want to go in and look at their terms of service and see if they provide backups for you or not. Otherwise, get yourself a backup plug-in like back, uh, WP up, uh, free. Is it back WP free, up free or something like that? And then backup buddy. You know, at least with backup buddy, you get support and everything. So it's worth it. So you don't want to live too dangerously. Secure your WordPress blog. This actually works hand in hand with the backups. At least have a security plugin installed and configured. Okay, every people who te are told they need a, a plugin that does security, they install it, but they don't configure it. That can just be as, uh, just as bad as n not even installing one at all. So uh, there's a a lot of wonderful introduction to WordPress security uh, presentations out there. I do have one of them myself, but it gives you a lot of tips, introduction tips without scaring the pants off of you to, that you can do for your website and has all the tools and everything out. And in fact, at the end of this, you'll be able to see where you can find all these wonderful resources. So you really want to secure your WordPress blog. I've never been, okay, I've never been hacked to this day. I'm not going to say ever because it could happen. But I'm just saying this is a peace of mind. You get, if somebody decides to deface your website or if you have somebody in inject code and everything, securing your website can be a really good thing. Oh, she wants to know, and she wants me to ask you all, how many in this room have been hacked or had a malware injection? What about a bot attack where your site was down, you go to your web host, my site's down, and said you're having a bot attack? Yeah. S some of the security can help you. Some of the WordPress security can actually really help you whether it's plugins or specific hardening methods. You know, there's all sorts of tips out there. It's really easy. Just Google. Throughout the years, I didn't have to worry about SEO until like maybe 2009. Blogging, start, blogging and Twitter and Facebook and just all the blogging and social media together just started to really become more mainstream. People people were really talking about it a lot more. And SEO was one of them. And a lot of bloggers got into talking about SEO and giving really bad advice to people and making a game out of this. People were, I was seeing some of my colleagues starting to cry because uh, they got de-indexed or blacklisted from Google for taking suggestions. From, so. The best thing to do is not consider it a game. Go back to your basics. Write naturally, be yourself, and don't think too much about the SEO factor. Some of you were probably here in some of the uh, SEO talks that mention Yoast, and they have like a gamification in it where you have to, the page analysis tool in it tells you, gives you all these green lights. Do not get tempted by that. In fact, during one of them, I actually mentioned there's an article on Yoast.com about not being tempted by the green lights because you don't, they may not necessarily work for you. And it, and to gain, you know, getting it to go green in all of them, you may be ruining how you write naturally. And you're, you, you will totally lose your blog voice. People will just disconnect from you. Before I got, did my, finally got my site focused together and everything, I c kind of, on my random personal stuff and everything that I said kind of pissed a few people off. 
at everything because I got tired of flaky people. And <laughs> there, there are a lot of crazy people out of there. You know, we all know this in person, but there's a lot more online that you have to deal with. And many of them have nothing to do in their day but grief other people. Ignore it if you can. Moderate what you can't. And if you are a blogger that is like, for example, Perez Hilton or something like that, who relies on polarization and to bring in, you know, both the positive and the negative, then you have to make that decision that that is what you're comfortable with. So if, you, if you're going to welcome those people, you've got to choose whether you're going to let that comment stay that's cussing at you or you're going to remove it. Or you're going to re reply to it and feed the troll. So you have some choices there for you. And that, you know, I mention that because I know that there are bloggers out there that prefer to be one of those people that love to get people riled. I love those people. I just kind of don't comment on those places because I don't want to have, like, troll people trolling me. Okay, so in comments, in comments and everything, you get comment spam for the oddest reasons just because some bots hit hitting your website and everything. So you just moderate it. You have tools in place like a Kismet, GASP, which is Gromap, Gromap anti-spam um, um, plugin. And what it does is it puts a simple box at the bottom and ask you, you can customize it and ask, are you human, you know, or are you a spammer or something like that or whatever, or check here if you're not a spammer. And it actually is hooked with something. It goes through and checks, you know, to see if it, you hit, you know, the spam queue, so, um, or the blacklist. And there's like what, uh, there, there's several plugins out there. Usually, a lot of the marketing group use the GASP plugin and Akismet, and they stack those two together. I use WordFence now. Well, you could use WordFence. Yeah, well, well, comments it, that usually does, uh, doesn't always work because they're usually hitting something either in front of your site or like your login page or something like that. But uh, you you could use those stacks together. But I'm going to tell you, even if you have those together, you will still get spam, but not in like not as much as you used to, which is cool. But you're never ever guaranteed that you know that it'll stop spam. It's always, people are coming up with new stuff all the time. You don't have to be a blogging machine. In fact, a lot of people don't even know if I sleep sometimes. Uh, some of my friends in here that see me on Facebook, they have no idea why I'm at, up at sometimes 3 or 4 in the morning. So we're not, we're not me, and even, even I need a vacation, so you do too. So set your blog schedule and live your life. Don't get so wrapped up into it that you have to pump up the next article for each day. In fact, just sit down one day and schedule a few posts. So there's a draft mode that you can do in WordPress. I utilize that. Yes, there are other tools like post schedule and, and, and there's you know, editorial calendar. Um, that you can use to schedule blog posts out. But I just use WordPress naturally and just, you know, I use my drafts, and then once I'm done, I schedule it from there. Just simple. Just, I'm the only one running my site. If you have multi-authors, you might need an editorial calendar. 
Make friends with other bloggers. Get out of your cave. I know it's fun in that deep, dark cave. A lot of you are introverts, and I know, I, I know it. Some of my best friends in the world are introverts, and that's practically okay. But it's not going to help you in the blog world if you want to get ahead. You actually need to connect with people. In fact, not just other people, but you need to actually reach out to influencers in your niche. So, like, for example, I would go and, of course, I would have my WordPress group, but I would go to people like Mari Smith or Syed Balki of WP Ginner, or Kim Garst of Boom Social, or Ian Cleary of Razor Social, to, you know, mingle with them and, you know, interact and everything. And sometimes they'll share my stuff. I don't ask them for this stuff. They'll share it because I'm interacting with them. I've built a reputation with them, and they like me. So another thing is make friends with your readers. Many of them who are commenting actually have a blog too. You know, they're going to leave a link behind unless you. And for example, I actually use a plugin called Comment Love. So that way, whenever they go and comment on my site, which was, is the intention of that plugin, I can go to their most recent post and comment, read it, comment on it, and share it, just like they did for me. This is my kid on his first birthday. Blogging isn't perfect. WordPress has that handy update button. Use it. Your words are never set in stone. Yeah, for a while, Google might, or might have it like as something else, but you can always change it. So, for example, I have posts from way back in 2005 that I, you know, I don't really like so much because they kind of like make me look ignorant, you know. <laughs> so what do I do is slowly go back and rewrite and enhance those posts. And for those that, that are semi-decent, I'll go and make a new post, link back to that, and expand upon the idea that was, you know, back when I didn't know so much, you know. Blogging isn't a glamorous job. Just like my son sitting here, a lot of times I'll be sitting in the same place on this laptop and probably in my pajamas. <laughs> For some, eventually it will be. I've known quite a few of my clients that are fashion bloggers that go to Miami Fashion Week, New York Fashion Week, Paris, and everything else. That, yeah, it's bec become a glamorous job, but when they started out, it was totally different. They were like, I am, I am absolutely in a different place. I get to dress in all these wonderful clothes. Sometimes they're, they're given, you know, she gets to borrow them. I mean, jewelry and everything. And she gets to write about it and everything else. And, that, and she gets paid. So that's the eventual. It takes time, you know, to get to that place. You're not going to do it overnight at all. So my advice is don't quit your day job. Please don't. Bless you. Humble pie. I do have quite a bit of ego. I, I, I have to admit that. I think I am awesome. So, uh, but the thing is, is sometimes I say things, and then I'm like, I am so wrong, and somebody calls me out, and I'm like, yeah, I'm wrong. I'm really sorry, and then I learn from it. So... Out there, when you're, you're getting bigger and blogging and everything, and you're reaching over 10,000 a day or more, don't get too cocky, you know, because sometimes you're going to have to eat that humble pie, and it's, it doesn't feel that great. But when you do, when that does happen, accept it, learn, and move on. And the big thing is, is family is really important. And I get a little, <laughs> you may like to blog, and you get so wrapped up into it, but don't forget your family. This kid is amazing. And 
So the great thing is, is he's been blogging since he was nine years old. He's a WordPress user. So he's <laughs> One day he's going to be really ancient in the blog world like me. <laughs> but he understands what I'm doing. He supports it. But it doesn't encompass my life. I go and I spend time with him. I do karate. I've done karate with him. He was in for four years. I joined it after his first year into the adult program because their kid program takes four years, the adult program three years. I got in and we both got our black belts at the same time. <sighs> so don't forget that when you're blogging. And the biggest thing, and this is relaying on the blogging isn't glamorous, the family is important, and everything else, you got to keep hustling. No matter what. In fact, I have a rec recent post that goes over this. And on the front page, you can see it. If you're struggling with, with your blog, do not quit. Just change the game. If you're having problems converting people, uh, you're not seeing people click on that, subscribe. There are solutions for everything. you got to just reach out to your people and pull them and ask them, what do you like? You know, what do you like when I'm sitting, you know, from my site? What do you not like from my site? What do you think I could do better? Or specific, even little things, you know. You know, do you like my design and everything? Or is it annoying as, you know, crap? You know, or if it's as flamboyant as Nile's site, you know. There, there's always a solution. And if it's blogging, you think you're running out of the topics? There is a whole, there are articles out there, including on my website, on blog ideas for nearly almost every niche out there. In fact, I have a whole series de dedicated to blog ideas. Food bloggers, travel bloggers, lawyers, restaurants, all sorts of stuff. And you, each one of those ideas, you can spend hundreds more off of each of those ideas. So... There's no excuse. There's more to write about. And if you're tired of writing about that, then you, maybe you need to change what you want to write about. Find your passion. So after all the things, yes, you got to keep hustling. So I'm now Flores. You can find me at blogish.net. Please don't, for, don't forget to subscribe, uh, subscribe to my newsletter. And uh, you get a weekly tip whether it's WordPress, SEO, uh, web design, marketing, S you know, just about anything I talk about is on there. It's free. So, and then uh, please do follow me. on. And uh, most of the information from my other slides and presentations, like WordPress security, I have an intro to one. You can find it on SlideShare. And my username is BlondishNet. I try not to... Yeah, vary that too much. <laughs> Any questions? Honestly, I thought about that a long time ago. For, especially for my website, uh, I would think, see, when you subscribe to a blog post, you'll get every single one, and sometimes that's too much. And some people get kind of, you know, grouchy about it, and then all of a sudden they say, mark you as spam because they didn't scroll all the way down and use the link to unsubscribe. And that's not cool. So having them sign up for that newsletter lets you send them personal type messages too like for example you have a free ebook you know come on back and download it and wh whatever it might be or maybe you have uh, you can market to them you can say i i found this really great item and when, and this is what it is and oh this company is giving me like 35% off or whatever and, and i can share it with you all here's the coupon whatever and you just visit this link so using see if you use the regular blog post you just 
blog post, blog post, blog post. The other one is a little more dynamic where you kind of give them an insight of what's in your mind for that week, you know, other than just your blog post. So I really recommend the newsletter one over to subscribe to blog posts and everything else. Plus, a lot of times for me, because after all these years, it could become a security issue, having them to subscribe and having all those users in there. Well, what if one somebody as a subscriber gets hacked for some reason? And I'm not saying for my site, but other sites, and they weren't diligent on securing their site, then you have a problem. So does that help? So for me, what I do for separating, you know, your blog posts from newsletters on the difference is whatever I say in my newsletter will take a couple weeks to finally go on the blog. And usually when it goes on the blog, it's a lot longer. So you'll get the freshest tips first before I stop, start expanding on it. Okay? Like, uh, and whenever you subscribe to my site, you get my free ebook. So that's one of the biggest things. My ebook is um, 10 ways your site's not converting and how, how to fix it. So I, I tell you, I tell you the meat and potatoes on why, why your site isn't getting those subscribers and commentators and, and buyers. So they look for that kind of stuff. And, and you don't want to just offer them one ebook every so often, maybe a couple months later, offer them another one. And then maybe have a product that is maybe like $9 or something like that, like an, an e-book. And then sell them on that. And then you can still give them other e-books, but you're still, you're making money too. So that's a little bit different. They're getting a little more rich. They're still getting rich content, but they're, it's, it's, they're getting the first thing. They're, they've got this extra special thing coming to them first before the blog does. <laughs> For me, I don't. I haven't had that happen because I have a policy about it. It's actually, I will not mention it because it's kind of inappropriate what I do when people try to start hot linking my stuff. Um, basically, it's about file changing and putting an image or something in place that's inappropriate uh, to teach them a lesson. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I will go that far with that. But it, it really is. They're like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, no, you weren't. So uh, basically, there's a good thing. When somebody does that and they steal your stuff, the first thing you can do is give them a DMCA. DMCA takedown notice. Just search it on Google, and it's very easy to find and issue one of the, get one of those issued. Yeah. Okay, so, so when she shared it on Pinterest, she went to that person, wherever she got it, saved it, and then decided to share it on Pinterest and didn't give credit back to the original. That's why she got docked. In fact, Shada back there is, uh, did you already issue a DMCA CA takedown notice on Instagram? Oh, awesome. We went to her, Russell, uh, a few of us went to Burger in, in Planet Hollywood on Friday. She took pictures. Somebody already ripped off her Im image, and so she was, <laughs> she was appalled, posted on Facebook, and we, everybody responded back with how she could get it taken down. So, you know, there are ways. Every single service has their own way of taking it down. It's not, if you, even if you did it on accident, just take it down. Yeah. 
No, if she shared it directly from the source, right. then that's fine. Okay. It's when you start taking other so people's stuff and it, it, ba basically, yeah, you're basically posting it on Instagram or Pinterest and say, this is mine. I went to Burger or I went to do whatever. Okay. So that's a very, very good question. SEO does matter, it does. but y y we could have a debate, but I think you over, over it. Do not overcomplicate it. That's what I'm saying. So I'm, I'm going to give you an answer to that one. Go directly to their web host. You go, to, you go directly to their web host. I've shut down five different sites this year for trying to rip off my content. And I went directly to their web host about it. Yeah. Yeah. So if they, if they don't respond to it, you take action and go further. You approach whoever's web hosting them. Whatever you can do to get it down. As we see it in the plug-in industry too, people who sell nailed copies, and a lot of times it's not even my plug-in, and I will go out and I'll say this is not their plug-in, and this uh, they have to buy it and have a license for it, and they just nulled that copy, so it, and it gets taken down. I mean, it happens a lot all all over the place, not you know e-books. I mean, we see this all the time. Music, that's always been a big thing, you know. How do you think, uh, all this food, how do you think of doing a business in the children's side? So, one of the things is that the great thing about, like, sitemaps and everything, like, for example, even if, like, I backdate a post, it's still going to say, like, last modified date or something like that. And if it went to litigation, they can pull it in and see where, where, where you modified it, where it came in on the database, where you originally published the post, and everything too. So it can be found out down the way. If, if, it, if it doesn't seem so bad and somebody's like really hardcore into getting you to take it down, you take it to court and they will pull your database. The language you use in the website, the five people that you just talked to. Yeah. So basically, I tell them, I said, I say I issued a DMCA, you know, takedown notice, and they did not even answer, or maybe they, one of the guys started cussing at me and everything, and I didn't give him permission, you know, and I was able to prove that my site's a lot older. I mean, it's a lot older. The post is old, a lot older. The couple of them were like from 2007, 2008, and still have like tons of comments and still get stuff on him. And he was, you know, taken. This guy took him, and he thought he was in, you know, never going to get caught. Well, one of my readers fall, fell upon one of his articles and told me about it, and I issued it. He did. He cussed at me within the 72 hours, and I went to his web host. And I gave them all the information they needed. When it was posted and everything, I even told them I would give them my database to check it out. And they took them down, terminated. Yeah. And also, if you have an older website like mine, sometimes if you get lucky, you can go to like uh, archive, web archives, or the Wayback Machine, it's called. And you could get see through screenshots. Sometimes, if you're going through it, you'll see depending on how frequently you post, 
you can actually see screenshots of those older posts. So that's another way to prove, you know, that you did that then. So it's time for eats. Yay! <laughs>